Hey Gators, this is Miss Murphy and Miss Berkeley for Gator News on Friday, January 15th, 2021. We hope everyone had a wonderful week of online learning. We are so excited to see our Plan A students back in the building starting on Tuesday. Parents can join the Facebook group, What's for Lunch underscore WJG for cafeteria updates and the daily menu. Here's our cafeteria manager, Carol Jackson, with an update. Hi Gators, I'm Carol, the cafeteria manager. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you here on Tuesday. Um, a little bit of things are gonna change now that you'll be going to school four days a week. We'll be uh, sending meals home on Tuesdays, only for Wednesday. Starting Tuesday, we will continue breakfast, in the breakfast and lunch in the classroom. I will post every weekend the menu for the following week. Friday is our last day for drive up. If you are Craven Live and wish to keep receiving meals through the drive up service, please go to any middle or high school and pick up your meals there. Ms. Murphy. Yeah. Are you ready for Guess That Gator? I'm always ready for Guess That Gator. Alright guys, we're gonna get started on Guess That Gator. Alright, our first gator was in the military. Wow, that's... Not very many of our staff members have been in the military. Yeah. This gator also usually wears a hat at work. That should hmm. really help us out, Ms. Yeah. Murphy. That narrows it down quite a bit. Now here's a really good clue. This gator likes to coordinate shirts and outfits with their coworker. Hmm. I think I have to pay more attention to that. Hmm. So who do you think this gator might be? All right, guys, who is your guest for gator number one? I think it's Miss Carol. I think it's Miss Teresa. I think it's Miss Amber. Let's see who it is. Hi everyone, I'm Carol. Did you guess it was me? I'm the one who wears a hat every day. All right, our next Gator played volleyball in high school. Really? So we have an athletic Gator here. Yeah. Pretty nice. This must be military day because this gator was also in the military. Hmm. And lastly, this gator has two cats. Aww. So, who do you think this gator is? Hmm. All right, guys, who is your guest for Gator number two? I think it's Miss Turner. I think it's Miss Turner. I also think it's Miss Turner. All right, boys and girls, let's find out who this second Gator is. Hi, it's Miss O'Connell in the front office. Did you guess it was me? For birthdays this week, we have Amari Swinger, Mateo Rivera Rosalie, Zeta Batiste, Misa Vallejo, and Trinity Fox. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Well guys, did you know that Sunday is Kid Inventors Day? Hmm. I was very intrigued by this. So stay tuned after the news because some of our fifth graders have put in a video about inventions they would like to see. Hmm. I'm excited. I know. Yeah. Miss, so I can't wait to see what they come up with. Yep. All right, Gators. We want to introduce you to a very special new member of the Gator staff. Hello, my name is Miss Kiefer, Miss K. I'm the new art teacher, and I'm so excited to get started uh, in the classroom today. Let's take a resource break. It's time for Library Corner with Miss Griffey. <laughs> Griffey back again um, with some book recommendations for you guys for our kindergarten
kindergarten through second grade readers. Um, we have a new book by Adam Rex. It's called On Account of the Gum. Um, Adam Rex has illustrated a whole bunch of books, um, but he's also written a few, including The True Meaning of Smack Day, which you probably haven't heard of, but it was adapted into a movie called Home, which you maybe have heard of. Um, so in this book, the main character gets gum stuck in his hair, and then his family tries to help him, but they're not as helpful as they think. So I'm gonna read just a teeny bit from the beginning. Here he is. He fell asleep with gum in his mouth. Always a mistake. That's the gum right there that you got in your hair. On account of the gum that you got in your hair, your dad said, sit still. And your sister said, duck. And you sat very still. Still, the scissors got stuck in the gum that got in your hair. And then, for our third through fifth grade readers, um, I'm going to put the spotlight on one of our Battle of the Books books um, that is written by Tony Dieterlisi about a rabbit and a dragon who are best friends. Um, but in the rabbit community, the dragon is uh, disliked and they want to get rid of the dragon. Um, but they're best friends, so you have to see how that plays out. And I'm going to read just a snippet from this one, a little piece from the first chapter. Um, this is the rabbit, um, the main character rabbit, his dad talking to him. So there I am, climbing up on them big rocks and boulders. All the while I'm thinking there must be a wolf, a lion, or a bear hiding in there. Remember I said I heard those weird whooshing sounds coming from the hill last week? Kenny folded the napkins, Kenny's the rabbit, and placed them around the banged up wooden table. I remember that, he said. I thought, hold on, son, hold on, his dad interrupted, waving his hands about. So I make some noises of my own to see if I can spook it off. And that's when I saw it. I'm going to stop right there. Um, but that is one of our Battle of the Books books. It's a really popular one. If you like fantasy stories, you would like this one. All right, guys. See you next time. Boys and girls, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's check in with some of our fifth graders for the joke. You want to hear a joke? Sure. What's the teacher's favorite fruit? Green apple. What? Why does that matter? It's a crayon berry. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully it's not toxic. <laughs> we hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And don't forget, Monday, there's no school because we are observing Martin Luther King Day. So we'll see you back to school on Tuesday. Later, Gators! The mention I would like to make is a dragon companion that acts just like a regular pet. My invention is the Yamatron. The dis it has a dispenser at the top, scanner to scan if you're hungry, oven, coffee maker, slushy machine, and marshmallow maker. That was my invention. I would like to build a robot to help my grandma cook. If I had the choice to make an invention, I would make an invention that would help stop pollution in waters in the air and help take trash out of the waters because this is a very, very big problem and lots of people try to help it, but I feel like it would just be easier if someone could make an invention. So why not make a robot?
For my invention, I would like to make an art caddy out of old food cans so it can store some markers and colored pencils. Okay, so I'm making a remote control motor that drives by itself. It's not done yet. And I'm at this is the motor right here. I broke the little thing so my dad had to fix it. And yeah, that's that. This is the piece, the back piece of what it happened. It's kind of broken, but my whole key to this is making a remote control robot motorcycle that does not need a controller.